In this problem, we're told to calculate the forces Fa and Fb that the supports exert on the diving board of this figure when a 52 kilogram person stands at its tip. A, we're supposed to ignore the weight of the board, and B, we're supposed to take into account the board's mass of 28 kilograms. Assume the board's uh, center of gravity is at its center. So this right here is the drawing from the book. And so we know this is going to be one meter, this is three meters. We have A and B labeled. And then we have this person here that's going to be 52 kilograms. So the first thing that you do whenever you solve any of these problems is you want to draw a free body diagram of the forces. So let's go ahead and draw that. So this right here is going to be our board. And so for this first part, I'm not going to label um, the mass or the, take into account the board's mass, right? Because A doesn't want us to do that. We're ignoring the weight of the board. But for B, we're going to label an additional force, but we'll do that in step B. So what are the different forces? So our person standing right here is going to have the force of gravity acting on them, right? Which is just going to be mg, right? The force from gravity. So mg, we know their mass is 52 kilograms. And then what else do we have? We have two forces acting up right here, force A and force B, we're going to call them, right? This is going to be the forces that are supporting the board. So Fa, Fb, right? So these are going to be our two forces. Uh, and then we'll have mg, but as I said, this is from the center of gravity, but we'll ignore that until step two. So this right here is going to be the diagram, right? And so how do we solve these problems? So you solve these problems by taking into account the sum of the torque. Right, so from previous problems, you should have seen this, but essentially, since this is an equilibrium, since it's not really moving at all, uh, or not moving, it's zero, right? So the sum of the torque is going to be equal to zero, and that's how we're going to solve this problem. Because what you should know about torque, at least you should know the formula for sure, it's radius or distance. I'm going to call it distance, it's just the radius from the pivot point, but we're going to change that, so uh, I'm just going to call it distance, right? So I'm just say distance d times force times the sine of theta. Uh, theta is the angle between you, where your radius is and where the force is, right? So uh, where we choose our pivot point, uh, but essentially in this problem, the way we're going to set it up is every single time it's going to be a perpendicular force, meaning that the angle is going to be 90 degrees. And we know the sine of 90 is just one, so we can really ignore the sine of theta for this problem. Uh, but if the force was at an angle, you'd have to take that into account. But essentially it's just going to be distance times force, right? So zero is going to be equal to the sum of the torque, but that's what we're going to want to do, right? But how do we choose um, where we're going to choose to be our pivot point, right? Because that affects the distance, correct? So we have to choose a point to be our uh, pivot point, essentially where we're rotating around, right? Because if we choose it here, it would rotate like this. If we did it like this, it would rotate like this. We have to choose. And so we're trying to find FA first, correct? So since we're trying to find FA, what we want to do is eliminate one of the other forces that we don't know. What other force don't we know besides FA? We don't know FB. And if we choose the point at which FB is at, to be our pivot point, it will eliminate it and we can solve. I'll show you how it works for this first part, right, for A, and then you'll see uh, for the next ones. But what we're going to choose, just go along with this, we're choosing FB, this force point right here, to be our pivot point, right? And so let's add up all the different torque, uh, the torque from each of these points, right? So there's going to be three different points, and we're going to use this formula to calculate them. So let's start with this one right here. This is going to be M, uh, Mg, and if you look, when you label torque, right, because when we add it in this formula, some of them are going to be negative and some of them are going to be positive. And that's dependent on which side it makes, or the direction it rotates when that force is being applied. So this force is being applied down, correct? And it would rotate like this. This force would cause it to do this. And notice this is clockwise, if you think of a clock. And so if it's clockwise, we label it positive, or negative, sorry. So this is going to be negative, right? So just keep in mind negative, and then let's calculate the torque at that point. So it's going to be the distance. What is the distance from the pivot point we chose? It's going to be three meters, right? That's the distance. So three times the force. What's the force? Well, it's mg, right? So the mass we know is uh, the person is just 52 kilograms. So the mass is 52 kilograms multiplied by gravity, 9.8, right? So this is the first part. Now let's do fb, and you'll see how this works. So fb now, uh, I'm just going to write plus, but it really doesn't have a direction because you'll see. So it's going to be the distance times the force. Well, what's the distance from the pivot point of fb? Notice that its distance is going to be zero. Right? It's, it's at that point, so therefore the distance is zero. It's just going to cancel out this force, so we don't need it. And it's going to allow us to solve for Fa, because it's going to be the only variable. right? Because zero times the force Fb, this just becomes zero. So it eliminates that one. Now we can do this one. So this one's going to cause it to go this way, which is counterclockwise, therefore it's positive. So now we can just plug it in. So D, what's the distance from the pivot point? We know this is one meter, correct? So it's just going to be one. And then we multiply it by Fa. And what you should see here is that we can just solve for Fa, right? If we move this to the other side, Fa is equal to 3 times 52 times 9.8, right? And this right here is going to give us the force. So let's go ahead and do that. So plug this in your calculator. 
52 times 9.8 times 3. So 52 times 9.8 times 3, you're going to get 1528, or one, sorry, 1528.8 uh, newtons, right? Because this is a force, uh, 1528.8 newtons, correct. So this right here is going to be FA. This is what they wanted for the first part, FA. But yeah, so you can round it however you want. Just do what your teacher wants you to do. But this right here is your answer to A. Let's move on to B now. So notice how we did A, right? We eliminated B by choosing that to be our pivot point. So how do you think we're going to solve for B? What we're going to do is eliminate the pivot or eliminate A, F of A, and just solve for B, right? You can do this multiple ways. That's just the way I think we should do it. But set this FA and we can solve for FB, right? Because now this is gone and this is going to be the only variable. But yeah, so now this is our new pivot point. So just keep that in mind. So zero is going to be equal to, uh, this right here is going to change a little bit, right? So it's still going to be negative because it's going to go down this way and cause it to go clockwise. But the distance has changed, right? Now instead of three meters, right, this distance, it's four. It's the whole thing. So four, the mass is the same, 52 times 9.8. And then we can add, uh, let's do FB now actually. So uh, think about where FB is, right? So it's causing it to go uh, this way, right? Uh, like this, right? But it's upwards. So look at it counterclockwise. Therefore, it's positive, right? So, because counterclockwise is positive, so plus the distance. What's the distance from the point? It's one meter, right? This distance is one meter from this is our pivot point. So one times the force, which is FB. And then we can plus, and then notice this is going to go to zero again. The distance from it is zero, so the radius or distance is zero times, F, or sorry, this is zero, times FA. But yeah, so zero times FA, uh, that's just how it's going to be, right? So, uh, this is just going to be FB. And now what you should notice is we can just go ahead and solve for FB, just like the last one. So FB is going to be 4 times 52 times 9.8. So we'll go ahead and plug this in your calculator. 4 times 52 times 9.8. So you're going to get it equals 2038.4. And then this is, again, Newton's. It's a force. So this is your answer to I guess not A, sorry, because this was like part A of part A, I guess. And then this is part B of part A. So you're, these are your answers to part A, essentially. But yeah, so this is going to be FB for when there's no mass of the board. And then this is part A, right? FA or force A and force B. So yeah, let's move on to the next part now where we're assuming there's a mass. So this is going to make it a bit more complicated, but we can still do it. So um, yeah, uh, let's do it. So now we got to change the body diagram because we're saying for part B, it says take into account the board's mass of 28 kilograms. So now there's another force. And so what you want to do is label it at the center of gravity, this force of the mass of the total of the board. And they say the center of gravity is at its center. So if you imagine this thing, right, this is it. Where's the center of the board? It's just halfway in between. So one meter, three meters, it's going to be in the middle, right? So it's not drawn to scale, but essentially it's right here in the middle. So essentially it's going to be right here to the right of FB, okay? So this right here is going to be our new force, which is the mass of the board. I'm going to call it MBG, I guess. So just the mass of the board. It's going to have a mass right, force due to gravity. So it's just another torque we have to take into account when we solve it, right? Because these are going to change uh, FA and FB, right? Because it going it's going to be, have to be greater, right? Because there's another force pushing it down. So these have to support it greater, essentially. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and solve. So this was A. Let's do B now. So we're going to do the same exact thing we did for these, right? But uh, we're just going to have to take into account another force. So let's see. So this is going to be, so what we want to choose, let's start with uh, FA we're solving for. So we're going to choose this to be the pivot point once again. So if this is the pivot point, MG is going to be the same as this part right here, right? Because it's uh, distance, which is three meters, right? Three meters away. Its mass is 52 still, and then at 9.8. So we keep in mind, it's still going to be negative, right? Because the pivot point is the same. So minus three times 52 times 9.8. Now let's do this one right here. So MBG is another one, but this is the new one, right? So it's going to have a force going this way. Therefore, it's uh, clockwise. I want to label it negative again. So minus 3 times 52 times 9.8. Uh, it's going to be the distance. What's the distance away from FB? It's just going to be uh, 1, right? So just 1 is the distance, right? Because you imagine it's here. B is our pivot, so it's 1 away. Times the mass of B, which is going to be right? The MB is just the mass of the board, which is 28 uh, kilograms. They tell us that in the problem. So 28 times uh, gravity, right? So 
Now let's do FB. So once again, FB is going to be zero because it's zero meters away from our pivot point. So FB is zero. And then FA is just going to be plus FA, right? Because it's going counterclockwise still. And then it's one meter away, right? So what you should notice is now we can solve for FA again. So yeah. Uh, if we move this to the other side, FA is going to be equal to just adding these to both sides or the other side, sorry. It's just going to be 3 times 52 times 9.8 plus 1 times this is just going to cancel, right? So 28 times 9.8. So let's go ahead and do that. 3 times 52 times 9.8 plus 28 times 9.8. But yeah, so 1800, that's going to be, so yeah, so FA is going to be 1800 Newtons, right? So that's FA. So FA is 1800 Newtons. Now let's do FB, right? So this was FA, now we're doing B. So now the pivot point is going to be right here. So... Yeah, so now the pivot point's here. Let's do MG. So MG is going to be four meters away now. So and keep in mind, it's still going to be in the clockwise direction, so it's negative. So minus four times 52 times 9.8 plus, or we have to take into account this one now again, right? So minus, this is going to be uh, the distance away now, right? Because this is two meters away. So it's just going to be, uh, it's just going to be two meters away, right? So two, because it's right here in the middle of the board, and this is two meters away. So two times uh, the mass of the board, which is 28 still, times 9.8. Keep in mind, we're just using this formula over and over. But yeah, so, and then plus, right? So FB is going upwards now, so it's counterclockwise. So plus FB, the distance away is going to be one. Correct, right? It's one meter away here. So times one, which is just FB. And then FA is going to be zero because it's zero meters away. So FB is going to be equal to just do this, right? But add it to the other side. So four times 52 times 9.8. Four times 52 times 9.8 plus two times 28 times 9.8. So go ahead and plug this in your calculator. Let's go ahead and do that. So do four times 52 times 9.8 plus 2 times 28 times 9.8. So if you do this, you should get 2587.4, which you can just round to 2600. So 2600 newtons, right? So it's going to be 2600 newtons. Uh, yeah, so this right here is going to be uh, the answer to, or the FB, right? So this is FB. Uh, this was FA for when there's a mass on the board. But yeah, so essentially, uh, these are going to be your answers. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Hey guys, so I actually made a mistake on this problem and I wanted to fix it real quick. Uh, it's an error with uh, this part right here. Uh, notice right here that this is actually going clockwise, right? Because if you spin it this way and it's rotating around B for this part, uh, so right, look, it's going up, it's going uh, clockwise, therefore this should be negative. That was a mistake on my part. I labeled it positive, but it's actually supposed to be negative. So this is minus FA. And uh, yeah, so this is minus FA. And so what this means is this is going to be minus, therefore this answer is negative. So it's really negative 1800 newtons. And what this means is essentially it's downwards. So these are all positive, meaning they're upwards, but this one is going to be downwards. So minus 1800 newtons uh, or 1800 newtons down.
right? But yeah, so Fa is negative 1800 newtons. You could just say 1800 newtons down. Uh, and then these are all up. But yes, I'm sorry about making that mistake. Uh, I should have caught that earlier on. But essentially, clockwise, therefore, it's negative. Hopefully, you understand that. But uh, yeah, everything else should be correct. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you found this uh, useful.